Greetings once again, friends, for the final round, the answer round of the Harry Potter Quiz Night 2022 in conjunction with the Shetland Library. It has been my pleasure and privilege to be your quiz master this evening. I hope it has not been too strenuous on you or too easy either. Hmm? Remember, be honest. Swap your answer papers over if you want an honest answer taken from your neighbour, from your friend, or from your loved one. Or family member, not always the same thing, you know. With a family like mine, I should. So, where were we again? Oh, yes. Back to round one. How exciting. Now, you'll recall that question number one was, what is the name of the device which Dumbledore uses to extinguish and relight the streetlights on Privet Drive? And the answer is, of course, the deluminator. Deluminator. I named it myself, you know. So that's one point for deluminator. Question number two. What is the name of the magical plant which Harry uses to breathe underwater and who tells him about it in her book? The answer is, of course, Gillyweed and Dobby. In the movie, it is Neville Longbottom, but in the book, it is Dobby. So that's one point for Gillyweed, one point for Dobby. What is the full name of the conductor on the night bus, is question three. The full name of the conductor on the night bus, and it is, of course, the inimitable Stanley Shanpoik. Stan, it was friends, but Stanley to use look. Stanley Shanpoik, rogue and rapscallion that he is. That's one point for the full name of Stanley Shanpoik. Question number four. How do you find Diagon Alley and what is the name of the landlord who guards it? The answer is, of course, tapping the correct brick in the wall behind the leaky cauldron. Now, if you also said three up, two across from the bins, then you get an extra point. That's just for you smarty pants out there. Tapping the correct brick in the wall behind the leaky cauldron, three up, two across from the bins, gets you an extra point. Question five. What type of creature was the pet which saw Hagrid expelled from Hogwarts and what was its name? It was an Acromantula and its name was Aragog. Aragog. Acromantula and Aragog. One point for each of those. Which accolade did James and Lily Harry's parents held during their time at Hogwarts? The answer is, of course, head boy and head girl. That's one point for both of those, as in one point for that answer. It's rather an easy question. Half for, both, for each of them, one full point if you got them both. Question seven. What would muggles see if they were to look at Hogwarts? The answer is, of course, a dangerous, mouldering ruin with signs saying danger, keep out on them. If you got dangerous, mouldering ruin or words to that effect, then you get one point. If you remembered the entire thing plus the signs saying danger, keep out, 
you get an extra point. Smarty Pants win out in this one, you know. It is for super fans, after all. Question 8. How did Daily Prophet reporter Rita Skeeter, the most annoying woman ever born, find out so much information on Harry and his friends during the Goblet of Fire tournament? The answer is, of course, she is an unlicensed animagus turning herself into a water beetle to listen in. Did you get all that? She's an unlicensed animagus, gets you one point. Turning herself into a water beetle gets you another point. Two points if you got it all. What is the full name of Voldemort's mother? And what ancient wizard was her family descended from? Her name is Merope Gaunt. That's M-E-R-O-P-E. Merope Gaunt. And it is Salazar Slytherin, of course, from whom they were descended. Hence their proclivity for Parseltongue. That's Merope Gaunt and Salazar Slytherin. One point for each. Question number 10. Why was Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Poppington sentenced to death? And by what nickname is he better known? The answer is, of course, that he had a magical mishap with Lady Grieve. If you remember that, you get a point. If you remember the exact details, as in instead of straightening her teeth, he accidentally, accidentally even, or accidentally, gave her tusks. Did you get an extra point? And finally, for his nickname, Nearly Headless Nick, you get another point. So there's three possible points to make up there. He had a magical mishap with Lady Grieve, one point. Instead of straightening her teeth, he accidentally gave her tusks. Two points. Nearly headless Nick. Three out of three points. So, compile your scores for question for round one even. Questions one to ten. Hang on a moment. Filch wants a word. I shall be right back. Yes, Mr. Filch. Yes, I shall be sure to tell them that it is down to your perspicacity and How's the world observation that you caught me out? Yes, thank you very much indeed. You can move on now, thank you. And take that Mrs. Norris thing with you. Goodness. The man is so bossy. But then again, he has caught me out, you know, because in question four I asked, what is the name of the landlord who guards the leaky cauldron? And then I never gave his name. It is... Tom or Old Tom? He is, of course, a wizard. If you got that, that's another point. Tom or Old Tom guards the leaky cauldron. So, moving on. For round two, question one was, who is Harry's defence against the dark arts teacher in year three? The answer is, of course, Remus Lupin. Professor Remus Lupin. Question two. Name the four witches and wizards who founded Hogwarts. Their full names, that is. They are, of course, Rowena Ravenclaw, Salazar Slytherin, Helga Hufflepuff, and Godric Gryffindor. Rowena Ravenclaw, Salazar Slytherin, Helga Hufflepuff, and Godric Gryffindor. One point for each of those full names. If you got the last names, half a point for each one. Name the poltergeist who haunts Hogwarts. A bonus point to name the only thing that scares him. The answer is, of course, Peeves. Mischievous blighter that he is. Peeves is the poltergeist. 
And the bloody baron is the... I wasn't swearing, thank you very much. It's an adjective describing a man for his crimes. The bloody baron is the only thing that scares him. So that's Peeves and the bloody baron. One point for each. Lots of points to be made up in this case. In which mirror did Harry see his parents appear to him? The answer is, of course, the mirror of Erised. E-R-I-S-E-D. Erised which is, of course, desire in mirror writing. Era said, that was question four. Question five, in what village, so no, that was for one point. Question five, in what village was Harry born? Godric's Hollow. Godric's Hollow for one point. Question six, into what house was moaning Myrtle sorted? The answer is Ravenclaw. Not Hufflepuff, as many think, Ravenclaw. For bonus point, how did she die? Half a point if you got that she was killed by the Basilisk. And why was she killed? Another half point if you got that she was muggle-born. The basilisk only seeks out the muggle-born, after all. So, Ravenclaw, basilisk, and muggle-born. That will give you two full points if you got all of those. Who created the Philosopher's Stone was question seven in round two, and the answer is, of course, Nicholas Flamel, my old friend. Literally old, he's ancient. Still moves like a spring chicken, though, with those running shoes of his. Who created the Philosopher's Stone? Nicholas Flamel. Question eight, one point. Question eight. What is Professor Dumbledore's full name? Full name. Albus, half a point. Percival, half a point. Wolfric, half a point. Brian, half a point. And of course, Dumbledore, or else it wouldn't be my full name, would it? Albus, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore for two full points, if you got the whole thing. Which dark wizard did Professor Dumbledore famously defeat in a duel? And it was a rather smashing one, as you shall see shortly. Who Doug Voldemort later killed in his prison cell? The full name was, of course, Gellert Grindelwald. Formerly a dear friend, Latterly, an ancient enemy. Although we did exchange letters before his death, and he did say sorry. Quite nicely too, but still, he was rather mean during those years. Those of you who have seen the films, Fabulous Beasts and Where to Find Them, and its sequel, will know of what I speak. The new movie shall be coming out shortly and shall be rather smashing and tip-top, I can assure you. Quite looking forward to it. Question 10. What is Voldemort's birth name in full? This was an easy one to finish with, of course. The answer is, of course, Tom Marvolo Riddle. Tom Marvolo Riddle. No wonder he ended up being such a stinker. No pausing this time, moving straight on to round three. Yes, nothing to say, Filch. No, good. Round three. Who unwittingly gave Hermione permission to take most potenti, phonetically spoken again, potions out of the restricted section of the school library? It was the poor unfortunate 
Professor Gilderoy Lockhart. Cowardly chap, but still he didn't deserve what happened to him. Or maybe he did. Depends on what you think. What do you think? Discuss amongst yourselves. I'm busy reading. Question number two. When is Harry's birthday? The answer is, of course, 31st July. That's one point for question one. One point if you got question two right. Question number three for another full point. How many times was nearly headless Nick hit in the neck with a blunt axe? The answer is 15 and a half. No, no, I'm just kidding. It's 45. 45 times with a blunt axe. At what point does it stop becoming careless and just become downright extraordinarily dangerous, I ask you? So the very idea of being hit in the neck with an axe in the first place is somewhat dangerous, I suppose. Still, careless. Question number four. What is the name of the sweet that Dudley Dursley eats when the Weasleys visit Privet Drive in the Goblet of Fire? The answer is, of course, ton tongue toffee. And you might be forgiven for thinking that I've been eating some tonight with my ramblings and mumblings and fumblings through the evening, and it continues even now, see? Tun tung toffee gets you one full point. Question number five. What is the address of the Order of the Phoenix HQ? Number 12, Grimmauld Place. Number 12, Grimmauld Place. If you got Grimmauld Place, I'll give you half a point. If you got number 12, without Grimmauld Place, well, you're just forgetful, and you would find very, very many addresses that way, will you? So, half a point for each, half a point for 12, half a point for Grimmauld Place. Who is Ginny's first boyfriend? was question six. And the answer is, of course, Michael Corner. Michael Corner gets you one full point. Question seven. How many brothers does Ronald Weasley have? And the answer is, just checking to make sure it hasn't gone up in the time between reading the, the question and turning over the page, as you might be forgiven for thinking sometimes. The answer is, of course, five. He had had five brothers. Rest in peace, young man. Brave suckling. No spoilers. How many brothers does Ronald Weasley have? Five is the answer. How many points is a golden stitch worth? is question number eight and as with question number seven it's worth one full point if you got the answer right 150 points 150 points for a golden stitch for one full point question number nine who takes offense at the symbol worn by xenophilius lovegood at bill and Fleur's wedding it was of course Victor Crumb of Dormstrang Academy. Quite the young athlete. Victor Crumb took offence. One point. Finally, for round three, what type of car is Mr Weasley's flying car? It was... It was not a Ferrari Testarossa. Oh, I was so hoping I could say that again. Ferrari Testarossa. I just said it again anyway. It was, of course, a Ford Anglia. Ford Anglia. It's still out there in the woods, you know, with it beeping at night, revving the engine, slamming doors. Maybe that's just the young ones getting home. Ford Anglia was Mr. Weasley's flying car. He loved that car. One full point for that, also. Moving swiftly on... It's hitting one stride now. Round four, the final round. 
Name one of the passwords given to access the Gryffindor common room during the entire series of books. Possible answers in alphabetical order are... Are you ready? Abstinence, Boulder Dash, Banana Fritters, Baubles, Caput Draconis, Dillagrout, Fairy Lights, Flippity Gibbet, I love that word, Flippity Gibbet, Fortuna Major, Mimbulus Mimbletonia, Odds Bodkins, Pig Snout, Quid Agis, Scurvy Cur, another favourite saying of mine, Tapeworm and Wattlebird. That's abstinence, boulder dash, banana fritters, baubles, caput, draconis, dilligrout, fairy lights, liberty gibbet, fortuna major, mimbulus, mimbletonia, odds bodkins, pig snout, quid agis, scurvy cur, tapeworm, or wattlebird. And if you got any one of those, then award yourself a rather smashing two points. I don't struggle myself if it can be the fact that, well, I say boulder dash and I eat banana fritters, I rather like baubles, uh, fairy lights as well, yes, standard, flippity gibbet, love the word, oddspotkins, scurvy cur, and of course uh, I have a mimbulous mimble tenure on my bedside stand, or rather I had, Neville's mother, uh, auntie gave it to me, granny, yes, sorry, sorry, I am getting on, you know. Now, stop rambling, man. They need the answers. Question two. The secret passage to Honey Dukes is located in which statue in the third floor of Hogwarts? And what word must you say to access it? For a bonus point. It is the statue of a one-eyed humpbacked witch. If you got one-eyed witch, you get half a point. If you got humpbacked witch you get a half a point. If you got one-eyed humpbacked witch, you get a full point. And if you remembered that the magic word is descendium, descendium, then you get an extra point. So, moving on. How many secret passageways? Question number three. Into and out of Hogwarts Castle are shown on the Marauder's map. You all know? Hold up your fingers then. Oh yes, quite a lot of you do. The answer is seven. Seven. Seven tunnels into and out of Hogwarts shown in the Marauder's map. You get one point for that. Question number four. Name the Marauders. Nicknames and real names, remember? <coughs> so, Mooney was Remus Lupin, Wormtail was Peter Pettigrew, Padfoot was Sirius Black, Prongs was James Potter. If you got Mooney, half a point. Remus Lupin, one full point. Wormtail, half a point. Peter Pettigrew, one full point. Padfoot, half a point. Sirius Black, one full point. Tongs, half a point. James Potter, one full point. Here we are, Armando. Stop biting your fingernails, man. What profession are Hermione's parents? Was question number five. What profession are Hermione's parents? And the answer is, of course, they are dentists. Why do you think her teeth are so smashing? Although some magic did go into the making of those. Dentists. Fine people. Lovely. Lovely. Just go to show not all muggles are bad. Well, most of you aren't. How many staircases are in Hogwarts? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Question number six. I'm getting ahead of myself. What is Moaning Myrtle's full name? What is Moaning Myrtle's full name? Her full name was 
Myrtle Elizabeth Warren. If you got Elizabeth, give yourself a point. If you got Warren, give yourself a point. If you got Myrtle Elizabeth Warren, give yourself two points. Question number seven. How many staircases are in Hogwarts Castle for one point? The answer is 142. 142 staircases in the castle. Question number eight. Professor Dumbledore is a scar above his left knee. In what shape is it? I had to check myself, you know, years since I've seen it. It is in the shape of the London Underground. It's magic, you know. In the shape of the London Underground. Quite handy when you're travelling, muggle style. Question number nine. When Sirius Black was arrested and prisoner of Azkaban, what room was he taken to and locked into? One point for this. Professor Flitwick's office. Professor Flitwick's office. Finally, question 10. The easiest one of the lot. Hogwarts students take OWL exams, OWLs, in their fifth year at the school. What do the letters OWL stand for? Ordinary Wizarding Levels. Ordinary Wizarding Levels for one full point. So, take some time, add up your points and decide amongst yourselves who is the super fan, who is the cleverest. If anybody got full points or near to them, then please let us know at the Shetland Library. They'll pass, pass it on to me and I shall make sure that well, I shall do my best anyway, that you should be enrolled at Hogwarts, if at all possible. Otherwise, if you endeavour to pass on your details to those fine people at the Shetland Library, that's every single one of you who have taken part tonight, then you can Take your choice of these two rather smashing design certificates and I shall have my friends there forward your names on to me and complete them for you, whereupon you may collect them from the Shetland Library. So draw, you can drop in your name to them at the Shetland Library in a handwritten note or send them an email if you know their address. Please don't send owls. The building is new and refurbished. The carpets would never survive. So please do not send owls. Snail mail as they own. Oh, no, 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 in fact, don't send snails either. The, the, the trails are fine, they'll, they'll leave. Ugh. Simply send postal mail. Leave a handwritten note at the desk or else send them an electronic mail if you know their address. I'm sure you'll find it on their library website. Mark it for the attention of Ian at the Shetland Library and my friend Ian shall endeavour to ensure that you receive your certificates once I have completed them. I shall use my most smashingest handwriting, I can assure you. So thank you very much for taking part this evening. It has been wonderful being back here with you all again. I do hope that you all take the chance to read the books once again in celebration of <clears throat> 25 years of Harry Potter. Who would have dreamed half a billion books? Four years ago, half a billion books. All that money donated to so many good causes and charities over the years. Simply fabulous, isn't it? 
So many children's lives enriched by reading about this young boy wizard and all his brave, brave friends. It still catches the imagination today, evidently by the fact that you're all here, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're done listening to this old duffer, and you're all having fisticuffs over who's the smartest, who's the most brilliant one amongst you, and who cheated. Slytherins, I'm looking at you. Until next year, I shall sign off and leave you with a thought. A book is a doorway into another world. Be very careful which doorway you step through. Some worlds are worse than others. The world of Harry Potter is marvellous, magical, mind-blowing and available at the Shepton Library. Do pop in and say hello to them. Tell them I asked them in person. Thank you and good night to one and all. It has been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your patience and forbearance. Good evening.